the play testing really I had never really seen it and I, I had chosen not to be a play tester in the past we'd kind of talk about it and I didn't want to do it that's grueling I mean really it's you know a lot of people I think don't see how much work goes into it. And so when an issue does slip through, people think, ah, they didn't play test it. When in reality, you probably did on these grueling late Monday nights, and, um, and sometimes things just don't get caught. So I, I get that, you know, I understand that. Usually with playtest groups, we end up getting the uh, about five or six playtest groups assigned to each book, um, and they and we try to get a good cross section of um, of kind of the Australia, New Zealand area, uh, American groups and, and European groups. We try to make sure that we get a good balance between all of those because um, you know there's always something different that you know, people will interpret. And stuff. Uh, we usually give them some instructions about what we think might be um, might need a bit of extra testing over top of the other. But we normally say to you know, try out all the lists. Don't just try them within themselves, but try them against other other lists from other books from the same period, so late war stuff versus other late war stuff. At the moment, doing an early war thing, so as well as testing the individual lists in the book I'm working on, uh, getting them to test them against stuff from Blitzkrieg and Hellfire and Back and uh, Burning Empires, um, just to see how, how they balance up against them. Yeah. Um, Obviously, playtesters do test between forces in the same book, but um, we don't, and we deliberately don't tell our playtesters what specifically to playtest. We tell them, um, like, we want you to test in the Vietnam thing, armor versus armor, but go out there and do something weird and wonderful. You, you know, you pick the mission, you do this sort of thing. Sometimes we know, okay, we focus down the problem is this small, and we want you guys to test this small problem. But generally, we, um, we n don't know what we don't know is the biggest problem. The stuff we know, we're usually fairly confident we got it right. It's the stuff we don't know, and that's why we try and get, we don't give our playtesters a particularly tight design playtest thing. It's, okay, we've just created um, the Fuhrer Panzer Grenadier list, playtest it. So oftentimes the playtesters will come up with ways of interpreting lists that you do as a designer just never thought of. Mm. You're sitting there and you're like, well, hang on, is that even possible? Did I write that into the <laughs> list? And sure enough, there it is. <laughs> it's like, and they're really good at exposing those kind of um, uh, those things before mm. before they go too far. Yeah, um, if, if something's out of whack, they'll, the playtesters will let us know and we'll have a look at it. Um, normally, it's one person at a time working on a book, but normally we'll grab and talk to each other about what's wrong with something and, and uh, discuss what could be the fix, what where the balance issues are. Sometimes it may be tweaking to do with the points, sometimes it may be tweaking to do with the statistics of a particular vehicle, um, or it might be the balance of the choices in the army, how how many of that thing they can get, limiting maybe the number. So there's a, there's a balance between what, what it should be historically, what they actually had, and then you've got to think about the game balance side of things. And the tournament scene is quite, it's quite a big thing in the Flames War world, so you, if people are worried that it might be a, a super powerful army in the tournament scene, you've got to, you've got to consider that as well. Yeah. When something misses playtesting, you know, and something rears its head, you know, far down the road, when probably by that point you guys have kind of forgotten about, about playing it, I assume, because of the release schedule, but, you know, how, how does the office tend to take that, and, and what, are, what are your next steps when that, when that occurs? Um, yeah, it's frustrating when you go, oh. especially when often the little wee things, it's like you can immediately see a solution to it. And it's like, ah, if only somebody had pointed this out three months ago or two months ago, if somebody had thought of this. Um, and, you know, hundreds of really good players looking at it and it's still easy to miss something. Yeah. Um, the, the difficulty then is one of the things we don't want to do is have the game a constantly moving target. In a computer game, it's really easy just to have a patch download, and anybody who's playing the game automatically gets the patch, and everybody's playing the same game. There's just no possibility they're not. You're not allowed in without the patch. But um, one of the things we don't want is you carry your box of toy soldiers, your books, and your folder this thick, 
of all of the changes that have been made. So we try and be very conservative on making changes. Um, one, if they're just happening again and again and again, you are going to get a fold of this thing very soon. And two, um, often the first response is not necessarily the right one. Um, so we try and just wait and watch and treat it as a very large scale playtest, I suppose. Just watch the results and see what, what's happening and try and try and find out where the, the smallest change to actually solve the problem is. One of the things that we've done in the past, and now that version 3 is out of the way, I'm about to start again, hopefully on a more regular basis, is the lessons from the front where it would be a QA type um, thing where we'll answer questions on how does this work, what's the intention here, and so forth. 